an updating entrepreneur for a startup, which I found it. Okay. You have founded a startup. Uh, and uh, okay. I will start with the last one. Okay. So thanks, Matteo, for being here. He will uh, give a talk on the stochastic big body flow of the stochastic resonances and the fusion in small body dynamics. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for all being here. It's uh, an honor to be here present his work. Conducted together with uh, Benjamin Boschmann. Uh, we were both working uh, for ESA. I was in IMS space. Benjamin was in Pelespazio. And we decided to work together on this project. Uh, that's about bringing forward, let's say, the Poincaré picture in going from uh, determinism and predictability from Laplace, then Poincaré came and said, okay, so that's the mechanics is, is deterministic, but actually not predictable because we have chaos. And here we're aiming at saying, actually, so the mechanics is not even determined. So let's see, let's see if we can do this. Um, the starting point is of a hey, 1982, in which uh, it's stated in this abstract that uh, uh, actually so the mechanics is an example of, uh, of a field in which uh, determinism cannot be assumed necessarily. Uh, so since then, a number of works attempted at modeling uh, statisticity in uh, in dynamics in general, but particularly in uh, celestial mechanics. Uh, it's worth outlining uh, the work by Bruno in 2009 on the work in celestial mechanics, or Idea Tony Quani, uh, modeling stochastic behavior in the three problem. So, what is a stochastic differential equation? Uh, you can see that uh, actually we are taking uh, an ordinary differential equation, bringing the differential of the time on the right hand side of the equation. X is our state, the stochastic process. And uh, added to the deterministic component S times PT, in which F is called the drift, we have a G matrix that's multiplied by a uh, stochastic process, which is uh, uh, the, the most natural choice is Brownian motion. Um, and so we have a G relating the, the number of Brownian motions that we are dealing with in our process. And this is related to our state, which is on its own a stochastic process via the diffusion matrix G. So the natural question is. Uh, why is this relevant for celestial mechanics? Uh, uh, in this lemma, I won't go into the detail, but maybe it's easy to just say this, that because of the nature of stochastic calculus, in a one-dimensional system, if we have something like this, so we have A, which is a constant determining the drift, and B, the diffusion. If we have something like the product of the X times self, in the usual case, in the deterministic case, let's say, we would have nothing because it becomes the is zero. But because of the nature of stochastic calculus, we have that dt squared is zero, dt times dv is zero. But because the variance of the random walk, the random walk, random motion is proportional to time, we have that this one is equal to d squared dp, which is equal to d to d times dp. And so this is, has many important implications, I think, for the mechanics. Because you see that uh, if we have a coordinate transformation in which x is the state and y is a nonlinear function of uh, the state, we have the, that the differential of the new uh, representation of the state is not simply the Jacobian of the transformation times the, the same equation we had before, so this two terms here, but actually there's a term that's proportional to the axiom of the transformation. And this will play a role in the evolution and the diffusion of. Uh, Things that naturally would be integral motion. So the question is why grounding motion is astrodynamics? Um, previous works we have built on uh, motivated this a bit qualitatively, saying that uh, uh, there's dust around the sun, and we can model this dust as a, as a source of a thermal bath, which is not really uh, a thermal bath in the sense that uh, the stochastic manifestation on the particle is not due to collisions but rather of uh, thermal stochastic wiggles of the gravitational field that leads to something like a Brownian work, uh, work on the dynamics of the point mass. Uh, we showed this also quantitatively. We randomly sampled a plane, uh, simply initializing randomly its major axis and centricity, and we showed uh, inside a disk of a certain size what is the number of particles dust inside it. And so via Gauss theorem, we can say that the gravitational pull coming from this disk is proportional to the mass inside it. 
And actually, we did the uh, frequency analysis of the signal, which is the density inside this disk as a function of time. And we actually found that the, the spectral density, uh, this is frequency, it's kind of constant. So the assumption that the signal is actually uh, uh, a binary process, so a brand motion, seems to hold even numerically. So we start from, uh, before going into the trivial problem, we start from the stochastic for the problem, which is the usual one here described in polar coordinates, in which we have two uh, additional stochastic perturbations uh, related to the radius of the vector. Previous work argued why this is a compelling model, and we start with this. And uh, with this model, using the, the lemma I have planned here, we can see that actually the energy and the angular momentum are not constants of motion. The angular momentum in particular is easier because there's only diffusion. So the average of the angular momentum is constant while we have the, the statistics of it diffusing in space. Well, for the energy is even more interesting because together with uh, diffusion, the second two terms, P and X lemma, so this one, we have that a term is also multiplying the T and it's positive definite. Everything is positive multiplying the T. So the energy is slowly drifting towards uh, higher values while it's also diffusing and the uncertainty is increasing. We can see this numerically. Uh, for these results, we use the uh, Neuner Maruyama uh, numerical scheme for integrating the system. And you see that for the deterministic case, beside numerical error, the angular momentum and the energy are constants of motion. While in the stochastic case, they are characterized by stochastic behavior. It seems like the financial markets, the graph of these two quantities. But they're qualitatively different. Maybe one cannot see this from here, but actually H is associated to a zero mean and E is different. You can see this here. We did, we did a Monte Carlo analysis on uh, the multiple realization of the stochastic process of the energy of this world problem. And okay, this is a numerical, but you can see that the scale here is really small and the mean is kind of constant in agreement with uh, the symbolic expression we, we obtained. And for the energy, there is this small width towards less negative values. We started with an elliptic point. So this was the two-body problem we started from. We wanted to go to a three-body problem to discuss basically the origin of the moon and also potential dynamics generating potentially hazardous asteroids. And so we started from this perturbation, uh, the model of the perturbation, and we simply went from this polar representation to inertia one Cartesian. And uh, uh, Ido's lemma gave us that the drift uh, is still zero, but the diffusion is written like this in the initial frame. Then we added to it the actual deterministic components of the three body problem, a circular restricted one. And uh, once again, we have to apply a transformation and this lemma again to go from the inertial to the co rotating reference frame. And in this frame, uh, the usual equation for motion old, but the diffusion is made of this, in which x, r, and why are expressed in the rotating reference frame. And so we integrate these equations numerically again, and you can see that uh, the Jacobi constant, which is not a constant of motion anymore, is characterized by stochastic behavior, which in particular is not stationary because the transformation from the reference frames is time dependent. And you can see in the configuration space, we play in the evolution of the orbit. And so we are starting uh, still at L4. So in the deterministic case, we should still stay still in L4. But because of this perturbation, we start getting excited and we go into an Horschel trajectory, which eventually leads to an escape from the ocean and intersect the orbit of the primary, which in this case is the Earth. And so we, we follow Bill Bruno's work in arguing that something like this could model the origin of the, uh, the moon due to uh, an impact project coalesced in L4, and then because of the the, the dust around the sun was excited and left the orbit and with a non zero probability of hitting the Earth uh, then. So, symbolically, uh, I won't explain, expand the diffusion of the Jacobi constant because it's even longer than this, but this is the drift, and you can see it's time dependent. And you can see also that, again, everything is squared. So, the Jacobi constant is going down, the energy is going down. You can see it here. Again, a Monte Carlo simulation gave us that the diffusion, statistic diffusion, is uh, leads to an increasing in the standard deviation of the Jacobi constant and uh, a drift towards less positive values. 
So uh, this, the goal of this perspective in celestial mechanics was to, uh, first of all, uh, explain some kind of dynamics that could we, 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 we conjecture could exist for the Trojan population of asteroids moving from L4 to L5 in the Jupiter Sun system, and also could lead to the formation of potentially hazardous asteroids. So maybe these asteroids could escape the ocean trajectories and uh, lead the uh, enter uh, an intercepting orbits with the Earth one uh, due to this capacity perturbation. And most importantly, it could explain the origin of the moon and why this object, this Mars sites object, leaving us for left. Uh, so in the title, we also mentioned stochastic resonance, which is this process in which if one is starting from if one is starting from a double wave potential and starting here in the configuration space, it will stay here. But if you say that actually this is a little bit too bent, plus some suggested curve, then you will be excited in a way that for certain values of epsilon will make you go something like this. There's an optimal value for which you have this kind of resonance, which is called resonance. It's different from the usual way of explaining resonance in this conference. In this conference but it's nevertheless a resonant. Uh, we couldn't find it, but that's simply a consequence of Eagle's Lemma because you had resonance, you could have a statistic resonance only if the drift is solely due to this double well potential light, uh, uh, double well light energy, sorry. And uh, because uh, the expression of the Jacobi constant for us is not only associated to the proper potential of the three-body problem, but has also a great additional term. This means that it's not possible to obtain this. One could hard uh, code it in a way that simplifies this diffusion matrix for the truly problem and kills the, the additional term from this lemma. We didn't do this because uh, there's no physical meaning in such a model, but we expect to have something like the best resonance between L5 and L4. Uh, if this matrix is more sparse. So, regarding future works, uh, it would be interesting to see, and also to understand if there's something valuable in it, to see from a given stochastic to the problem, if one can uh, compute the probability of escape, because if the starting energy is a little below zero, the, the stochastic perturbation could lead to an escape orbit. The same could be done in the three body problem. So, what's the probability of impact given uh, enough time? Also, maybe important for this context is the third point uh, um, the fact that uh, even in low dimension, the, 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 the interception of the invariant array, uh, which creates topological constraint for our diffusion, uh, don't exist anymore. And so, uh, one can expect uh, something like carbon diffusion in low dimension. If there is a stochastic perturbation, I, I have no idea what are the implications of this in celestial mechanics, but this is, uh, uh, this is in fact something that's been uh, investigated in uh, particle accelerators for the dynamic aperture to, to see what's the uncertainty of hitting the, the actual particle uh, in the presence of uh, stochastic uh, perturbations in the form of electromagnetic uh, noise. Finally, uh, it could be interesting to generalize. The quantification of chaos. Uh, as we try to say here, uh, if uh, celestial mechanics is not only unpredictable because of chaos, but it's also stochastic, uh, it may be necessary to quantify the degree of predictability in some more general way. And so, for example, uh, generalize the computation of the probability density function of uh, chaos indicators like the finite time element exponent and see if this has implications for the long term evolution of. Perturbed Hamiltonian dynamics. This is it. Um, here are our, our emails. I look forward to your questions here or by via email. Thank you.